Our next speaker is Craig Spillane. Electrician by day, Craig is the founder of Menunite, an, an organisation initially set up as a, as a closed private group on Facebook to help men deal with any issues they face. Suicidal thoughts, depression and anxiety, stress, PTSD, addiction issues, debt, bereavement or any associated issues. 84 men per week die through suicide in the UK. That's one man every two hours and Craig is leading the way to lower that harrowing statistic. Tonight he'll describe the impact of lockdown on men's mental health and how <laughs> Online support networks like Men Unite are providing a vital connection for men around the world. We know that some of you, some of what Craig talks about will be upsetting and some of you might find it triggering. We'll be sharing details for support in the chat, but I'm delighted to welcome Craig Spillane. I've been wrecking my brain over this speech for about six to eight weeks now. You see, I've never really done anything like this. I even won an award last year and I had to get up on stage and accept it in front of a packed room of business representatives and radio station executives. I was voted as a local hero for making a difference by the listeners of a commercial radio station. I was shocked to say the least, me winning an award. I've been into prison three times over the years and I've been into rehab with a thousand pound a week cocaine addiction. Yet here I was, up on stage, literally speechless, accepting an award for setting up a Facebook group simply to encourage men to speak. That group is called Men Unite, and it's literally changing men's lives. It's currently 6.10am, just a week or so before I'm here now speaking to you all. Thank you for watching, by the way. I won't go on too much about the unprecedented times that we're living in. I'm sure, like me, you are sick to death of hearing the words COVID and pandemic. What I've done here is the typical modern man thing. I left it as late as I possibly could in the hope that it would go away or be forgotten about or that I'd not have to deal with it. But thanks to my good friend Darren from Expert Citizens, here I am typing away in silence a speech. The TV volume is set to four and the family are all in bed still asleep. Today's modern man is statistically somewhat troubled, to say the least. Last year alone, there was 5,691 suicides registered in England. 4,303 of those were men, so that's almost 80%. Or on average, 12 men every day. One man every two hours who takes his own life. It's the single biggest killer of men under 50 in the UK. It's a harrowing statistic and it's one I'm passionate about changing. Imagine the ripple effect of it. The heartbroken families and friends are all left behind. Right, let's talk about Men Unite. It was on April the 10th, 2019, and I was sat on the toilet before work. This is the place that all great ideas come from, isn't it? I was just sat there scrolling through Facebook and catching up on the group chats that I'm in, and I was reading all of the negative posts and negative comments. I just thought about creating my own WhatsApp group, just for a few friends to join who I knew had been struggling and to give them a way to connect. But then I decided a Facebook, Facebook group might be easier. Um, say I wanted to add somebody and I didn't have his number. So I created Men Unite as a closed private group on Facebook and I invited 20 or 30 of my friends from various backgrounds. I wrote this as the group's description that morning. This is a group for men. We are here to support and encourage and help our fellow men. If you have had or are having any issues, we want to talk to you. Whether it's addiction or you feel lost, sorry, whether it's addiction or if you've lost somebody that you love. If you feel alone or if you feel depressed or feel anxious, we want to help you. If you are in debt or feel that the world is caving in on you, we want to help you. As men, all too often we don't talk. We don't want to drop our guards and let people know our struggles, our fears and our secrets. We shut down, we close our emotions, we become selfish and distant. We slip more on the slope that we may have only had one foot on and then it can consume us. I want us as a group to stop this cycle and break the stigma and make it okay to talk. 
to let our fellow men know that we are here and we are in this together. I'm looking for people willing to share their stories and experiences and give advice with us. Most importantly, talk to each other or even privately just one of us. Engage with somebody and share your troubles and believe me, it will help you. So that was it. Men Unite was born. Throughout that very first day, I had loads of messages from mates asking questions. What's this group? Who's it for? Is it private? Can my missus see the posts? I assured them all that it was only members that could see as it was a closed private group. The very first person who posted in Men Unite was my best friend, Ian. His post was brutally honest and open, and I knew that I'd created something special right there. Ian is the typical mate, typical male. In the pub, he's funny and he laughs and jokes with friends. When we're out in couples, he's a loving husband. We all get along so well. He's got a beautiful wife and gorgeous kids, a lovely house and a great stable job. So looking from the outside in, Ian would have the things that most men would envy. However, that didn't stop him from trying to take his own life. Over Christmas in 2018, I'd met Ian for a pint on what's traditionally called Black Friday, when all the pubs are rammed with people that you've hardly seen all year. Sounds quite ironic this year, doesn't it? So I had a few pints of Ian and said goodbye, catch up soon, have a great Christmas, blah, blah, blah. I think it was about the 21st of December or whatever the date was on that Friday. Then all of a sudden, before I knew it, it was New Year and I thought I'd better ring Ian to see how his Christmas went. He didn't answer and I thought nothing of it. A few days later, I eventually got in touch with Ian and I remember the sound of his voice clearly. It was different, he sounded vacant. He told me that on the 23rd of December, he'd been sectioned and missed Christmas. He had tried to take an overdose. After what seemed like hours of talking, he finally opened up and simply said to me that Christmas had gotten too much for him. He was stressing over money, stressing about the kids. Now they're getting a little bit older. He didn't know what to buy them. He told me all this in confidence, of course, and asked me not to tell anybody. So I was really proud of him. And I was really proud of him that he found the courage to open up as the very first person on Men Unite. He'd not even told his family, yet here he was posting to 30 odd of our mutual friends. From that day one, Men Unite just snowballed. Friends joined in and then they invited their friends and so on and so on. We now have over 14,000 members and have reached 78 countries. We've got volunteers on hand 24 hours a day. Our admin team is based all over the world, places such as Australia, America, Canada. There's a team of around 20 of us on hand to offer support. Having members in the admin team worldwide, it means that any posts put on are read by somebody within minutes, sometimes seconds. We have set up as a community interest company and we offer various social activities for men. Football plays a big part. I think it brings men together. We are based at a non-league football ground, Hanley Town. We hope to open a drop-in centre there next year now. We've got a partnership with Stoke City FC and we offer a service called Football to All, which just gives any sort of men, any abilities, the chance to play football. Uh, we've got fishing clubs, running clubs, walking clubs. We've even got blokes that just meet up and go and walk the dog. We've just launched our own podcast that's hosted by our amazing admin volunteer, Biddy, and Port Vale player and Men Unite ambassador, Christian Montano. His own story is very powerful and moving, so please look out for that on our podcast. Even professional footballers can struggle with mental health issues. Since the start of lockdown, I've been busier than ever. Just before this pandemic started, we were looking at ways to make this a full-time job for me. That would be the dream eventually, but the lack of funding for mental health services is at breaking point throughout the entire UK. It's very difficult to do this right now, so I'm a full-time electrician and a full-time volunteer. The pandemic has seen men really, really struggle. Just simply the change in their daily routines. Everyday such things such as just going out to work. It's hard enough to get men to speak out anyway, but take away their work life and it's a very difficult change for them to deal with. Or their social outlets, such as simple things going out to watch the match with friends. These might have been the only places that they would actually think about venting or speaking out or letting anybody know that there's something was bothering them or maybe letting down their guard a little bit. It's been a particularly tough time for those men who had issues prior to all this as well. Some of our members have really, really struggled and heartbreakingly, we have lost a couple in the most devastating of circumstances. It's vital that groups like ours are on hand to offer support for men during their darkest days. 
In Stoke, as recently as last week, an 18-year-old jumped off the bridge onto the ring road around the city, tragically taking his own life. This is a public health crisis. We're on the verge of another pandemic, in my opinion, a mental health pandemic. I can see that we've come a long way in 18 short, short months. We are growing every day. The work is vital that we do, and we can only get bigger and get better, but more importantly, help men get better. We are men unite, and you are not weak if you speak.